Greetings and salutations, everyone. Welcome to DIY number three, unmasking or drawing the Picasso dove. Let's get right into it and let's double click in the project window to import this Photoshop file, this layered Photoshop file. It's called Picasso underscore dove 2.psd. That would be the one that's on Learning Suite. As usual, we are going to import this thing as a composition and we're going to retain layer sizes and we're going to click open. And hey, look, we got this little dialog box that asks us, hey, do we want to edit the layer styles, be able to edit the layer styles, or do we want to merge them into the footage? And 99.99% .99 of the time, you will want to merge them. Unless this, what this is talking about is those layer styles, those effects that you apply in Photoshop. Do you still want to be able to adjust those in After Effects. I have to be honest, I've never done this, not even once, but evidently some people need to do it. But uh, for our purposes today, merge layer styles into footage. And there we go. Okay, quiz. To open a composition that you just imported into After Effects, do you A, double click it to see the layers inside, or just kidding, there's no other options. You only double click it. That's the only way. And then everything stays in its place. We see all the layers. There's no looking in here. There's nothing else. Nothing else involved. Double click, see the layers, and let's get started. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. By the way, I'm hitting greater than, less than to zoom in and out of the composition window. Let's start with this upper wing right here, shall we? On the upper wing layer, if we double click it, you see that this is what we've got <clears throat> available to us. I happen to know that we are going to use a paintbrush to do this because paintbrushes in After Effects allow you to uh, draw them over time. So let's go up to our toolbox and let's grab the brush tool. That's Command B if you're looking for keyboard shortcuts. Uh, let's drag paint over here. And let's drag brushes over here as well. Okay, paint and brushes. Open that up a little bit so we can see. Okay, scoot that, paint and brushes. The wiggler, probably not as commonly used as paint and brushes. Okay, so you can see here this little circle we have represented in our layer window represents the size of the paintbrush. Okay, just a note on the layer window, you'll notice you have probably noticed in your usage of After Effects that when you double click on a layer, it opens up in this window and a couple of you have been tripped up by that because you're not sure why things aren't moving and you don't know how you got here and it looks exactly the same as a comp window with the exception of this little thing down here. But anyway, the layer window does actually come in handy when, I don't know, working with masks for one thing and secondly when working with brush, the brush tool. That's in fact, the only way you can uh, work with it in After Effects. Let's come over here to the paint panel and see what some of these options are in these drop downs. Mode normal, we're going to leave that on. Channel alpha, we're going to leave that on. Duration right on, that sounds like something we might want actually, but we are going to use constant for this one and you'll soon find out why. Let's assume that Picasso drew this from left to right. And let's go ahead and draw with our big round brush. I'm leaving it a little bit big so it can compensate for my horrible drawing skills with a mouse here. All right, so there is our black stroke. Let's close that and go back to our timeline and see what actually happened. We can't see the wing anymore because we painted it out. At least we've painted out the alpha channel, which blocks visibility of it. Let's flip down the paint twirly here. Let's flip down brush one. Man, we're going to need some more space here. Let's zoom in by hitting greater than. Zoom in the comp window by hitting greater than, less than controls that zoom in the comp window. And okay, we don't have any keyframes yet because we did not choose the right on mode. We chose constant. Now we have an invisible wing. We need to have that right on. Let's flip down these stroke options twirly and just as you may be familiar with on text range selectors, the start property controls the left side of the effect and the end controls the right side. And knowing that and knowing that we want to draw our wing on from left to right, let's 
see what happens when we scrub the start property from 0 to 100. That's pretty much exactly what we want, isn't it? Let's make sure we're at 0 on our timeline and let's keyframe the start property starting at 0% and then maybe, I don't know how long did it take Picasso to draw this stroke, maybe a second and a half. Let's jump to a second and a half and then scrub that up to 100%. Now we have the wing being drawn on. Let's go ahead and really quickly apply this effect to the other strokes. Uh, one quick note here, oops. All of these, you'll notice how when we double click the wing, it's white with black strokes, but when we go to our comp window, uh, we don't see the white. That's because all of these layers have been multiplied uh, against this paper colored background. And that's that's why that if we actually looked, if we t t take off and go to normal mode on our wing, you're actually going to see this. It's going to you're going to start out seeing the paint stroke that we made. It's actually erasing some of the white and then it slowly uh, unpaints itself or gets rid of the alpha. So it, it looks a lot better with multiply, and that's one of the reasons why this works, is because of the multiply mode. So, just an aside. Let's go down to this lower wing right here. Let's double click that, bring it up here. It looks to me like Picasso started at the left again and went over to the right. So we have the same settings in our brush. Uh, let's paint over our line, making sure to paint within the lines, to color within the lines. Wow, okay. Try to keep it together. <laughs> there might be a little bit of line showing there. Let's see. Let's close that. Uh, is that. I think that's actually part of the paper. Let's flip down. When I hit E here, it reveals the paint effect. Flip down brush one, flip down stroke options under brush one. And let's see. Yeah, I think we're good. I think that worked. Okay, where are, all right, we don't want all the strokes to draw on at the same time. We know Picasso was a great artist, but he was not able to draw, he didn't have eight arms, he had one hand that he would draw with. So we're going to have him draw the upper wing and then maybe the lower wing. So let's go ahead and jump to the beginning of that layer now that we've scrubbed it down the timeline, moved it down the timeline to a minute and a, a second and a half rather. Let's keyframe start, oops, let's keyframe it at zero, not one percent, and then let's have this one also take a second and a half. So a second and a half added to a second and a half is three seconds. Let's scrub that up to 100 percent. Okay, I'm going to hit U to collapse that layer, hit U again to completely collapse it, collapse that one. Let's hit uh, option slash to fit our document or our comp size into the comp window. And you're starting to get the idea of what we're going to do here. I'm going to move on to the head. I'll come back to the tail in a second. I will show you a method that some people prefer. We'll do that maybe at the end. So let's just grab the top head stroke. Oh wow, this one's small. Top head stroke. If I want to shrink the size of my brush, I just hold down Command and drag to the left, drag to the right to enlarge, drag to the left to shrink it. I'm going to probably leave it about that big. Go ahead and paint from here to there. Close that tab. Okay. Let's see. The lower wing finishes when? Right there or, or right on it. So let's move the endpoint of our top head stroke layer to the current time indicator by hitting left bracket. Let's hit E to reveal our paint effect. Let's flip that down. Flip brush one down. Flip stroke options down keyframe start. Uh, let's see, what's happening here? Ah, this, <laughs> as you can see, the paint stroke did not start until six seconds, even though the layer starts at three seconds. Let's move that back. As you can see, the sub layer, the sub paint layer can move independently from its parent layer. There we go. Let's keyframe start. Oh, where'd our keyframe go? It's way back here now. Let's move that to the start of our layer. Zoom in here, plus on the keyboard. Okay. And this is not going to take nearly as long as the other ones. Let's just have this be like 15 frames. Let's 
keyframe that from 0 to 100% over 15 frames. All right, what do we have next? Hit U twice to collapse that. The eye, the eye pretty much can just pop on. Let's see, how big is the eye? Yeah, you know what, the eye is just going to pop on. We're not even going to put a stroke on that one. Let's go to the end of where that, end of where the top head stroke, sorry, jump to, okay, after the top head stroke is already drawn on, that's when the eye is going to pop on. So let's hit left bracket to move it to right here. We're going to see the top head stroke draw on and the eye, oops, let's deselect it so it doesn't look like a crosshair. There we go. That's quite all right. Let's wait a fraction of a second before we start the bottom stroke of the head. Let's assume that he drew it from right to left. Let's hit E to reveal the paint effect. And oh, see, we did it again. I did it again. The paint sublayer is not aligned. There we go. There we go. Let's flip down the brush one twirly on bottom stroke. Flip down stroke options. That's keyframe start. That's also a very short stroke, so let's just go about that far. Keyframe that up to 100%. Let's start collapsing these things. Okay, so after that line is drawn, let's start drawing the olive branch. Let's move this one first, shall we? Let's move that to the current time by hitting left bracket. And let's double click it. And let's assume that Picasso drew starting from here and then kind of went down. I'm not sure how this is going to look actually, but let's try it out. Uh, e to reveal paint effect, flip down paint, flip down brush one, flip down stroke options, keyframe start, let's say maybe about that long. Uh, that doesn't look very good because there's a big gap, <laughs> big gap in the middle and it starts to draw. Yeah, I, I don't, don't like how that worked. Let's go back. Let's uh, delete this path and go to the beginning of our layer, double click to get into the layer window and let's paint again. Okay, that's the first stroke. I'm going to double back and I'm going to hit this and that. Let's see how that goes. Close that. Flip down brush one, stroke options. Let's scrub this start. Well, that's a little bit better, although you can see a tiny scrap of that lower branch there. I'm going to call that good for this tutorial. You can take your time as you do it. I recommend taking your time, but for the sake of your time, I'm not going to go back and fix that right now. Okay, so what do we have? Let's preview what we've done. Let's hit N to set our work area. Zoom out, hit space bar. Top wing, lower wing, head, eye, lower head, branch. Okay, pretty good. Oh, you know what we need? We need to do the signature. The signature. Let's stop that preview. Let's get the signature. Come on, last. Let's double click the signature, zoom out a little bit. All right, it looks like I'm going to need to enlarge this brush, or else I'm never going to nail that. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to try to do all this with one stroke. I'm going to start there, and I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to come down there, 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 loop around here. There we go. That's a, that's a Picasso signature if I've ever seen one. Hit E to reveal paint. Flip down paint, flip down brush one, flip down stroke options. Let's keyframe start. Let's see, Picasso probably took what? Second and a half, two seconds to draw his name. Let's scrub that up to 100%. Go back to our comp window so we can see what it looks like. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Okay, select all, Command A, hit U and U again to collapse everything. Okay, now I promised you I was going to show you an alternative, 
uh, alternative method for unmasking strokes. So let's do that with the tail right now. Oops, I had it applied for my practice. All right, when do you think is a good time for the tail to be drawn? How about right after the lower wing is completed? Let's jump to the last keyframe. I just hit U there to reveal the brush keyframes. Jump to the last keyframe, the last keyframe of the start property on lower wing. That is a good time to have the tail drawn. Now this is going to use a different method. Mask, I'm gonna delete that. We're gonna use masks and we're gonna use an effect that actually strokes along a mask. So with my tail layer selected, I'm gonna grab my pen tool and I can tell from the weight of the lines here that Picasso started here. So I'm gonna start tracing with the pen tool along the contours of this wing. And I obviously have to go back and correct. Let's see. If I hold down Option while I'm drawing with the pen tool, I can grab this handle and I can drag it this way so I can get a more accurate pen stroke there. I'm going to leave that alone. Okay, now first thing I want to do is this mask is kind of hard to see, so I'm going to double click this color label right here and change the color to like maybe a bright yellowish green. Click OK. There we go, that's easier to see. Well, it's easier to see against the black anyway. It's hard to see the handles. So, what do we want? How about a bright red? Bright red, will that work? There we go, we can see that against both colors. The black ink and the paper color. All right, that's pretty much as good as you need to get with this mask. It just needs to basically follow the contours of the ink line. With that mask applied to the tail layer, I'm going to go up to Effect, Generate, Stroke, and that is going to automatically, without doing anything, apply a white, what is it, two point, yeah, two pixel wide line to our stroke. Uh, I need to change that, just so we can see it, I'm going to change that to red. Red stroke, I'm going to bump up the brush size so that the thickness of this line covers up all the ink strokes. Right there, we can't see any more Picasso ink. I'm going to bump up the hardness to almost 100%. How about 100%? And guess what? The same things apply here, start and end, as applied to our brush method. The only thing that we're going to do differently is instead of paint style on original image, we're going to say reveal original image. Okay, and let's see. We are going to... That is the opposite of what we want. Okay, this is what we want. We actually need to animate the end property this time. So by default, start is at zero, end is at 100%. We need, we can, the only reason we know this is because we test it out by scrubbing the end property. End, start needs to stay at zero and not be keyframed. End needs to be keyframed from zero to 100%. So, at the beginning of this layer, let's keyframe end at 0%. Let's use about a little more than a second to scrub from 0 to 100%. So that's a, kind of a two-step method. I don't know which one you prefer. If you like drawing with vector, pen, mask shapes, you can use this method that I used on the tail. But the brush method works perfectly fine for this as well. I will not really grade you on which one you use. I will just grade you on what your, your final movie looks like. So have fun working on these, and when you're done, Save it out as an H.264, a compressed movie, and upload it to Learning Suite. Thank you. We'll see you later. Oops, sorry. Forgot to show you the final product. Uh, we're actually going to have to shift some layers here as well. That gets drawn on. The tail gets drawn on. So the rest, all of these layers down here are not going to draw on until after our tail finishes. Okay, so that looks good. Let's set our work area and then, oh, by the way, I need to turn off these guides. Those guides are annoying me. Command semicolon will turn off those guides. Command A to select all the layers, U and U again to collapse them. Let's give ourselves a little bit more room to work here. Select. Okay, I'm not sure if 
This is exactly how Pablo would have drawn it himself in this order, but uh, this will work for your assignment. You can actually have the limbs and wings and tail come on in whatever order you think best. I'm just showing you how to do it. Okay, thanks for listening to this long rambling tutorial. I will see you in class. Thanks, bye.